Hi, uh, this video will provide a short introduction to robust design and you will find more details about this area in your course book. Um, in this video I will talk about the robust design problem and try to explain what, what it is. Uh, I will talk about very briefly about one of the pioneers in this area which is Genichi Taguchi uh, and I will try to explain the connection between robust design and design of experiments. And then I will focus on the two main approaches described in the course book, which is the crossed array design or Taguchi approach and the combined array and response model approach and try to explain the main uh, steps of the analysis in, the, in these two approaches. Uh, robust parameter design or RPD is explained by uh, Douglas Montgomery in the course book. And he describes this as an, an approach to product realization activities uh, that focuses on, the cho on choosing the levels of controllable factors or parameters in a process to achieve two main objectives. The first is to ensure that the mean of the output response is at the desired level or target. And uh, the second objective is to ensure that the variability uh, around this target in the response is as small as possible. And if we take a look at um, different <coughs> purposes or focus areas in robust design studies, they will typically be one of these uh, on, on the slide. So we can try to design systems that are insensitive against disturbances, such as environmental noise factors, when we run the system or we can try to design products that are insensitive uh, against variability that, that is transmitted to the product from other components in the system where the product will be used. Or we can try to design production processes such that the product which is produced uh, is produced as close as possible to the target value even if, if some of the process variables can be difficult to control exactly. And we can also try to determine process settings such that uh, critical product quality characteristics are as close as possible to their target values with uh, minimal, minimal uh, variability. Okay, Genichi Taguchi, who is this guy? Well, he was a Japanese engineer and uh, he developed robust design methods based on design of experiments which became very popular in industry. Uh, the methods were widely introduced in the US in the 1980s. Uh, they were very, very popular, but within the research community, they have also be, been uh, criticized for lacking statistical rigor and efficiency, and sometimes also that the methods could be uh, actually ineffective. However, also the research community agree that this is a very important area in industry, the robust design problems. Uh, Taguchi is also well known for the Taguchi loss function, which is a graphical representation or a mental model, if you say, uh, of how an increase in variation within um, specification limits leads to an exponential increase in customer dis dissatisfaction. The common thinking around specification limits is or was that customer the customer is satisfied as long as the variation stays within the specification limits. However, Taguchi stated and, and tried to explain with this visualization that any variation away from the nominal or target value uh, will begin to incur customer dissatisfaction or losses. And as the variation increases the customer dissatisfaction uh, will gradually increase also, or exponentially increase. So here you have the exponential uh, loss function, and you have the tolerance or, or specification limits, limits also. Okay, <clears throat> some important assumptions for robust design problems and their connection to design of experiments. Number one is that the system can be characterized by design variables, design factors, control variables, and noise variables, noise factors, uncontrollable variables. And also that the noise variables 
which cannot be controlled in reality, that they can be controlled uh, for the purpose of an experiment. And also importantly, that there is an interaction between one or several control variables and one or several noise variables that we can use to our advantage. If there are no such uh, interactions between control variables and noise factors, we do not have a robust design problem. Uh, this, these interactions I'll try to explain uh, with this slide. Here in the first model and uh, visualization, we have no interaction between the, the control factor X and the noise factor Z. So here we have the variability or natural variability in the noise factor. And here we have the, the uh, variability transmitted to the response Y from the, the noise factor through um, the control factors. So if we have no interaction between X and Z, then the uh, variability transmitted from Z to Y would be the same, uh, independent on the setting of the control factor. Now in this second example, the variability in the noise factor, once again, is the same. Uh, the variability in, in Z. However, however, in this example, we have an interaction between the noise factor and the control variable, and, and a significant interaction. And we can see that the variability transmitted from the noise factor to the response is much higher uh, if X is on its high level than if X is on its low level. And in this case, we have an interesting robust design problem, or we have something that we can use to minimize the variability in the response. So this is why it's important to understand that uh, if we have no interaction between control factors and noise factors, then we do not have, do not have a robust design problem. Okay, so let's go into some of the designs that are available. So the, the crossed array design is the first design approach. It's a, the typical Taguchi methodology or approach. Um, this approach means that we will have an inner array with control factors. So this is the inner array. In this case, we have four factors. It's a fractional factorial designs, a design, two to the four minus one. And for each of the inner uh, array runs, we will run a, a outer array, in this case, a two to the one design, just one factor in this case. And we collect responses for different settings of the outer array. Um, <clears throat> now, from the outer array, we can calculate the mean value. Uh, this is supposed to read the mean value, not y medel as in Sweden, but anyway the mean value and the variance. And we can use these two as separate responses for the inner array design. So we have two responses for the inner array design, but we collect them through the outer array. And in this case, we have only one factor, but the outer array can also be a, let's say, for example, a two to the three design or something similar. Uh, the analysis of the crossed array design is fairly straightforward. So the response values in the outer array, we, are, we convert them into two responses, as I said, the average of the response values and the variance or standard deviation of the response values. And this means that we have two separate responses. Uh, the average response we can use to figure out how to set the control factors to achieve a certain target value. Um, so in this case, uh, it's based on, on how to achieve the mean uh, of, the, of the system at some target value. The um, variance response we will use to try to figure out if there are uh, settings of the control factors uh, that we can use to achieve a minimum variance uh, for the response. Mm. Uh, the other approach uh, given in the in the course book is the combined array approach. Uh, this means that we have control variables and noise variables in one or in the same design. 
this is recommended since the ro robust design problem is based on using interactions between control factors and noise factors. So it's more logical that they are tested in the same design so that these interactions can be modeled directly. In this uh, simplified example, we have two control factors and, and uh, only one noise variable, Z1. And this is run together in, in a 2 to the 3 design. Okay. Uh, in going forward in the analysis, we will develop what is called the response model, uh, which is this one. Uh, it will include all significant main effects and interactions for and between control factors and noise factors. Uh, in this case, in this example we started with, we only have one noise factor, which is Z1. And we, we also have two control factors, X1 and X2. And in this area you see we have Z1 as a main effect and we have the potential interactions between Z1 and X1 and Z1 and X2. Uh, <clears throat> so, and it can be shown, shown that a reasonable assumption for the mean or expected value for the response, which is this one, is simply the control factor part of the response model. So we exclude uh, the, um, this portion and we are we give, we're given uh, this expected value or mean of the response model. Um, and the variance of the response is uh, given by this formula. So we have uh, sigma square and we have sigma square z, which is the variance of the uh, noise factor. And in this expression, we can see that uh, also in this formula, the variance of the response involves only the control factors x1 and x2. Mm. And formally, to analyze uh, the combined array designs, we start by conducting the experiment and we fit a suitable response model to the data. So we, we have this, in this case, we have the fitted values, beta 0, beta 1, and so on. And then we <coughs> replace the theoretical parameters in the models for the expected value and in the model for the variance of the response by the fitted parameters then. So in this case, we have sigma square. Is, here is the residual mean square from this fitted model in step one. And sigma squared z is not estimated, but we can select and test different values of the, um, the variance of the noise factor z. And then we try to optimize uh, this, um, these two functions. So let's say we want to have uh, to find a, a way to, to get a specific target value or expected value and at the same time minimize the variability or variance around this target value. Uh, in Design Expert, we have something called POE, which is the propagation of error. Uh, and in Design Expert, we are able to select the standard deviation for the noise factors uh, or it's equivalent to selecting the variance of the noise factors. So we can change them easily and test uh, different uh, values for these. And um, the uh, design expert software will construct plots of the POE, which is the square root of the variance uh, in the response. And they are called propagation of error plots. Uh, so in this case, <clears throat> you can see that we can try to minimize the propagation of error by selecting some sort of minimum in this um, uh, response surface or the POE plot here. Uh, so there are um, some aids in the software for us to, to work with uh, in this um, combined array design or the design approach. Okay, so in summary, uh, we have talked about the important connection between robust design and design of experiments. And we also covered uh, briefly two main approaches uh, in design of experiments to, for robust design. The first is the crossed array design or the Taguchi approach. 
and the second is the combined array design uh, and we also briefly covered the main analysis steps for the two approaches and um, by that i thank you for listening and i wish you good luck with your robust design problems thank you bye bye